is up everybody Sven Diesel here we're gonna be tying up the Porta Popper this is a design by Jonathan uh, Kiley from Fly Skins uh, you can pick it up through anybody that sells hairline um, looks like a killer pattern I'm gonna be using this for bass um, this is a uh, what we're gonna be tying up right now as you can see it's uh, made out of foam primarily it floats but as you strip it in it's gonna dive and so uh, I'm pretty stoked to test this out. Comes in a nice little package like this. Um, you've got instructions on the back in steps one, two, and uh, three, four. And they're pretty simple to follow. He has a YouTube video as well showing this, but uh, I thought I'd just tie one up and uh, show you guys a couple different ways to paint it as well. I've got an A-Rex hook in here. This is a one aught, the TP650. And we're going to be using some uh, thread, uh, sorry, some nano silk. This is a GSP uh, 3 aught or 200 denier in uh, white. And we're going to go ahead and start our thread right here behind the eye. Now, um, this is a uh, straight shanked uh, hook here um, for a lot of popper flies. Um, you want to, you know, popper hooks have a little bit of bend in, but we're going to be making that uh, security using this uh, 30 pound mono. Um, he uses some 60 or 80 pound mono. I don't have that and so I'm just using two strands of 30. What I'm going to do is line up uh, these, uh, this mono here and I'm going to tie it so that the two strands are on top, kind of uh, uh, sitting on either side of the shank and we'll work our way back into almost the bend and then proceed to go back up, um, not all the way to the eye but about a, you know, a third down from the eye and then we'll go ahead and secure this uh, over forming a mono loop um, on the uh, top of the shank and I want to make sure that these fibers are sitting on top of the shank almost going to either side of the eye and then we'll go ahead and once we get it to the desired length we'll go ahead and snip it and you can see it forms a little loop um, roughly a third the size of the the hook gap and we'll go ahead and do some nice binding wraps now and work our way a little bit down probably halfway down the shank to close that loop and secure that uh, mono on the top again. Now the purpose of this, uh, we're putting thread on the hook shank for a few reasons. One is we're going to be gluing on uh, the main body of the fly uh, that's made out of uh, foam so we want it to adhere really well and uh, I believe also that this uh, mono loop idea he uses is to help secure it so that it doesn't uh, spin on the hook shank. So the thread and this mono loop are going to serve a key role in the in the structure and uh, durability of this fly. Now this is the body of the fly, the main body, and it comes uh, um, in this length right here. You can see it's going to fit right on there. We got to cut it to where we want it to sit. I imagine you could trim this to do a shorter hook, but we're just going to keep this one as is. So I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and cut um, the underside. I guess you could use either side, but you only want to cut one side and uh, cut it about halfway through the foam um, here and then work your way all the way down um, into the butt section of or what will be the tail section of this fly and we're going to make sure not to cut our fingers but you can see here that uh, we also have to slice the um, tail section or butt section of this fly all the way through and it will all make sense here in a minute um, as we start to uh, uh, put this onto the shank of the hook but uh, if you're following the instructions this is what it says now you want to make sure you use super glue um, don't use the gel I had issues with that when I first started uh, doing these and I just put a thin thin layer you don't need a lot um, basically you want to just uh, um, cover each side making sure you're covering the thread really well covering the mono really well I actually put some on the mono loop um, and uh, that way it's just really bonding everything together. I start here up by the eye. I push down so that it's going into the slit where I cut it. And then I will go ahead and pinch it on the underside. If you have a ton of glue coming out, you put too much. I actually um, struggled on the first few, putting way too much uh, super glue. Um, but this should be right. And if it comes apart, just pinch it a little longer. It takes roughly... I don't know, 20 to 30 seconds for this glue to um, bond up. Uh, really good quality product. I really like this Gorilla Glue, especially with this foam uh, compared to the other ones I've tried. And so uh, there we go. It's holding. Now you can see uh, we're going to tie in the, uh, or secure the tail in now with super glue. And this package, it comes with two different tails. Uh, one is 
uh, significantly longer, but uh, they're both in similar design and uh, similar uh, height. Uh, but of course, this is a material you can cut to your needs. But I'm going to go ahead and use the smaller tail for this fly. And I'm going to measure. Uh, luckily, I cut it all the way to the shank, so I got plenty of room. But I'm going to trim out this tag end so it doesn't get in my way. Uh, that I could see being useful, but for me on the one out hook, I don't really need this uh, fly to be super long in length, especially for where I'll be targeting bass. I want it to be roughly about five, five inches overall. So I cut that and now I'm just going to pull back after putting super glue on each side and I'll go ahead and place it in there, making sure that it is uh, going straight back from the point of the foam and then give it a good press and secure it and it's going to bond uh, really good because we're, we're bonding that fabric or whatever that material tail material is made of um, to the foam so it's not like we're bonding the foam to the foam on the underneath side it seems to just stick really nice so we'll go ahead and adjust our hook back uh, to being straight and now we're on to the last step and this is we're almost done with the uh, making and uh, uh, this fly so this is going to be the the head and you can see there's a little hole right there and what I've done is I'm basically lining up the edge of this hole with the uh, the, the hole opening and so that's the placement I've been using you kind of want to visually see how far down the top uh, that goes because when you're painting this if you the the less super glue you have on there the easier it is to paint uh, I found it's harder to paint uh, super glue but um, I'm just going to put a thin layer here on the top, making sure not to get uh, too much. You don't need a lot. Just make sure it's, it's covered and coated. And then we'll go ahead and, and place that, starting up at the head of this, uh, lining up that, uh, the tip of the body to that uh, hole opening, and then making sure that uh, foam uh, goes all the way back straight down the middle of that uh, top of the body. And I'll just go ahead and give it a firm push down and it's bonding really nice so want to make sure that's secure give it about 10 seconds and we're good now to finish this fly this uh, ported popper we're going to be wrapping these edges around and what you want to do let me adjust this a little so you can maybe see a little bit better but you can see how this concaves down at that concave down point I want that to be at the bottom of the body uh, right there it kind of gives us a little bit of a uh, indicator on uh, where to tie it at least that's how I perceive it and so I'll go ahead and put a little super glue here on the bottom here nice thin layer and I'll go ahead and push this up if you're having problems I kind of push in the side uh, which would be right now on the bottom to help secure that and as you're pushing this down make sure you do not get super glue at all on your fingers uh, it's better to be really careful because I found if I have super glue at all on my finger and I'm pushing down to secure this, it actually causes the foam to come off again. And so then you gotta start over and glue it again. So just a little key, spend a little extra time here not to get super glue on your fingers. Push in on the sides that is not glued down yet right now to uh, allow these to get flush. And but it's gonna bond within 10 to 20 seconds and uh, you're good to go. So. There we go, we got the bottom secure. Now here is last of the fourth step. This little tag needs to get a little bit of glue on it. You can have this flipped in your vise. I just wanna show you from the side angle and you wanna make sure, I've seen from his photos that this tag kinda of naturally wants to go on the upper portion of the body, uh, just like how I'm doing, not directly in the center, but a little bit higher than the center. Uh, but uh, you can see right there, uh, naturally it's not uh, binding down or anything and then here's how I do it when I'm not videoing I just have it on its side that way um, I'm, gravity is kind of pushing it where it needs to go and we are pretty much done now so um, it is uh, a quick fun little uh, uh, ported popper um, I'm excited to test these out in the spring uh, but uh, that is only the first step of this uh, uh, fly. Uh, it, the package comes with a few more uh, bodies and uh, tails. You get extra tails. But the fun part is to color these to 
use your imagination. So we're going to start out here um, because not everybody has a uh, airbrush system, but these are just a Copic marker. I'm sure you could use Sharpies. I like these Copics because they blend a little better. And I'm just going to color this to mimic um, a perch or also maybe it could mimic like a frog or something. So I'm going to do a yellow underbelly. And uh, you always want to start when coloring any uh, foam fly or um, game changer. I always start with my lightest color first. And so we're going to color this whole underbody yellow. The reason you start with the lightest color first is because if you start with a darker, you can never color over it. You can only go darker is my experience. If somebody out there has more knowledge, um, I would love to uh, learn how to go lighter. But um, the only way I know to go lighter now is to uh, start over with a new uh, fly. So now we're going to use orange. Uh, it's kind of a fluorescent orange. Uh, I'll put the list of the uh, actual colors in the uh, comment or in the detail section below, maybe. But um, just use you know your imagination. Uh, we're going to color the whole inside of this mouth orange. That's what I've done on a lot of my poppers in the past. And so I'm basically uh, coloring this based off of previous poppers um, that I've tied and. Uh, patterns and combos that have worked for me. So I'm just going to color the mouth and uh, the front of the underbelly in the orange and then for blending I'll just use my finger brushing it um, just hitting it real lightly as with my finger. I'm not afraid to wash my hands after. I guess you could use like a paper towel or something but I don't know if a brush would really work. Uh, but just dust it with your finger and uh, you know we want to make sure that orange is uh, very prominent on the uh, the head of the the popper here and uh, for the main body of this I'm gonna go with this uh, brighter orange uh, sorry this brighter green I don't know why I said orange um, but I'm just going to use this paper to uh, blend this uh, tail first and uh, working on the uh, the tight spots of the uh, the fly and you can see I'm kind of going over a little bit of the yellow at this point which uh, should blend this green to be a little bit more light and so we're gonna work our way up covering pretty much the whole body now in this uh, bright uh, green and we're gonna just take our time notice how I'm using the side of the Copic marker and uh, uh, that gives a little bit better coverage and doesn't uh, blotch it as much because um, unless you're waiting for it to dry fully it's you're gonna see um, your your brush your your coloring strokes and so all I'm doing is just getting a nice layer and then I'm gonna go over it smooth um, with the uh, uh, the side of the marker but we're gonna make sure we get all these uh, uh, crevices in here, the holes, I'm going to color them green. Uh, this is taking a little bit longer um, than airbrushing it and we'll show that here in uh, the next uh, portion of this video. It, it makes it a lot easier for covering larger material with the, uh, the airbrush system with these same markers. It just gives it a little bit uh, quicker coverage, more even coverage and so that is a real benefit. But is it worth the extra money if you're only going to tie up a handful? No. Um, you can just do this and have a little bit of arts and crafts time. I remember when I started uh, doing uh, crease flies, foam flies, uh, my kids, I actually would have to tie up an extra uh, half dozen or dozen just because they loved uh, coloring them and thinking that the creations they came up with would be um, the most magical flies in the world that would catch fish. Um, so far here to date, we still catch best on uh, patterns and color schemes that mimic um, bait fish or um, uh, uh, larger fish as well. Uh, but you never know. Um, one of these days we'll catch one on one of my son's crazy color flies and, uh, you know, he'll think it's the most magical uh, color scheme in the world and he came up with it. So I love uh, foam flies and uh, letting your kids play around with them as well. Now uh, I'm going to add the spots on here. This is kind of a, a golden olive and it's just basically because my green, uh, brighter green, is not all the way dry yet. Um, we're going to see that this is kind of uh, blending that brighter green and creating uh, spots. I don't really have um, the camera angle I want uh, to do this and so uh, basically, I'm just coloring this in a circular motion, pushing a little bit hard down on the foam, 
and working my way doing uh, spots randomly all over the green portion of the fly um, making sure not to get into the orange or yellow and you'll see that here in just a second I'm almost done so you can see right there we've got our um, base layer of our spots and the only thing that I like to do when I'm doing this by hand versus with uh, airbrush system is I will always grab another dark color after doing this and go back and put a center dot uh, in the uh, the fly. It just seems to really make those dots seem more realistic and uh, more lifelike. But uh, well, I'm going to use black for this. Sometimes I'll use brown. But we'll just go ahead and put smaller dots inside of the dots we just did to make it look more lifelike. So. Uh, you can do these any way you want. This is also a little trick if you're ever doing like um, brown trout game changers or um, like a, a brook trout where we have um, bright color red spots with uh, blue around it. And uh, you can uh, basically uh, do the center dot first and then color around it. Uh, but if you're going darker, uh, you can always do the base layer first. But uh, it's a lot harder on a game changer than it is on this foam. This is quite easy and it looks um, amazing. And you can see we've been doing this now for about painting this or coloring this uh, porta popper for about uh, six minutes. And so it's a relatively easy process with um, an incredible result that is going to slay the fish. Um, pierce lots of lips and I'm going to be targeting bass uh, particularly with this uh, color scheme. Now the next step is we got to add the eyes. Now this is not necessary. You could uh, put on some eyes with a sharpie, but you know I found that uh, especially when uh, bass fishing and this is supposed to uh, dive down um, in the top a couple feet of the water column, uh, real eyes uh, or realistic eyes always seem to do better for me than um, non-eyed um, patterns. I've just notice that uh, maybe it's my confidence in that uh, fly or color scheme but when I fished uh, uh, streamers or um, leech patterns or um, uh, patterns that mimic like a, a worm or a Senko type uh, you know a bait caster rig it always patterns always seem to do a little bit better with eyes I have more hookup ratios I um, have more lip piercings and I land more bass. It's just my experience. Maybe it's only mine, but I try to put eyes on everything I use now when I'm targeting bass. So we've got the eyes on and uh, looks really good. The only last step I always do when doing these is I'm going to coat it in a protective uh, um, clear coat basically. Uh, for the purpose of this, uh, I found it really easy to use um, this uh, liquid fusion. It, uh, it goes on real nice. It, it doesn't uh, uh, bother the colors as much. You can't rub it a ton. But um, before I do that, this is a little hanger I make out of a paper clip. I basically just insert this into the uh, hook eye. And uh, we can uh, basically use the paper clip. And I put it um, basically under a book and on a shelf. So then it hangs and is hanging vertically. And so the liquid fusion will stiffen up that uh, that fabric type tail uh, really nice. So let's go ahead and get the uh, the liquid fusion down. Uh, I think I've got it here somewhere. And we'll just uh, lay our fly down here. Get it. Uh, sometimes it's easier off of this paper clip, but you just basically want to uh, put a thin layer kind of in all your target areas, which would be the uh, side of the fly, particularly around the eyes. I put it down our crease and around the hook shank. Uh, or the hook bend coming out of the foam and then I put a nice layer on each side of the tail and of course uh, kind of a nice thick bead down the top um, you don't I like to get my fingers dirty you can use a brush if you want but I'm just going to use my finger and kind of rub this all the way around and you can't really see it sorry this is kind of all hands but I'm basically just trying to work that uh, liquid fusion into all the uh, uh, cracks, uh, or not cracks, but the joints of the foam to the foam. And I believe that uh, this really increases the durability of the fly um, and it will protect uh, your paint job as well. I've uh, fished a lot of poppers where the uh, foam, or you know, as you fish it, 
the paint job you gave it uh, seems to bleed, like almost like the water gets between the clear coat I used and the, uh, the paint and just it ruins it and uh, kind of blends it together. And what I use is a bodkin here to work my way through the uh, tricky parts, just spreading it around the best I can with the side of the bodkin. Um, the more evenly you distribute it now helps because if you got any thick portions or somewhere where you put it on too thick as you hang dry it vertically it will um, run down uh, it's not that thick of a material but uh, I basically just use my finger to stroke that tail so it's straight and then I'm gonna put it up on my bookshelf and let it hang now if you have an airbrush system uh, Copic markers the advantage to them is you buy this little adapter kit here and you can hook it up to an air compressor and you don't have to buy the gas cans and you basically for you know 60 to I think the Copic airbrush systems like close to 400 bucks um, but I, I bought a air compressor that's used for a hobby uh, at the hobby store and it was you know I got it for like 100 bucks and it works great so we just put our marker in give it a little test and we'll go ahead and start spraying it onto our fly. Always start with the lightest color first. And you can see how much, how easier this is to create an even color scheme. At least it, for me it is. It's just way easier. Uh, but I might argue that for like a game changer using like a, a you know, the Chanel body, uh, I found sometimes it's actually easier just to do with, um, without the airbrush. But maybe that's just me personal preference. So we're going to do the same color scheme as we did before. And so now I'm going to come in with the orange. And this is where it's really, really easier to fade it in. You can see how smooth it's going. And I'm going to paint the whole inside of this mouth just smooth. There's going to be no issues. That's going to give a good paint coverage as I'm rotating it. Uh, just, you know, give it a little bit quick spurts and uh, cover the whole inside of the fly and it's night and day difference on the evenness. So let's get the green on there and uh, this is where you're really going to see the uh, advantage of a uh, airbrush system uh, or using these Copic markers in the airbrush. We're going to start um, covering this body and we are just smoothly applying it. Just super easy giving nice even uniform color I mean it's almost too easy and I really like this I haven't played around with uh, airbrushing a ton I uh, don't have any sort of training other than just playing around with this and experimenting on uh, uh, patterns like game changers that I've tied a lot of and uh, I really really like having an airbrush I didn't have one originally and uh, finally got one a few years back or a year ago I think is a, a present. Um, so, thank you, wife. But we are, um, you remember how much time it took with the uh, just coloring it. It was really hard to get in all the cracks and, and the joints, whereas this airbrush is just penetrating it and spreading it even. It's just amazing. So, uh, if you're pro, it's amazing. Con, costs more money. So, your choice. But now what we're going to do, instead of uh, drawing the dots, uh, uh, spots by hand, I've got this uh, template. Um, Hairline sells these. Um, so we are going to basically put in a, 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 the same dark ol or yellow olive, golden olive. And I'm going to take this template. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically uh, place the template over the top of this, uh, this uh, porta popper and we're going to uh, try to center it the best you can with because this uh, this will bind up in your hook point but I'm gonna basically put it over the top and stretch it tight and then I'm going to just spray the top and by spraying the top you are creating you know the black is not being painted on and so you're basically creating spots of the um, golden olive and I like to spray um, not pointing down towards the, the hook, but going up towards the top of the, the, the body of the fly. And that way it's more predominant on the top section because I don't want to paint the whole body. But you can see right there, that was super quick and easy. Got some spots. I could have gone down a little further on the one side, but 
that should still fish really well. So that's uh, pretty much it. Super easy, super quick. So I think I saved a little bit of time um, by doing the airbrush method. And now we're just going to apply the uh, a little bit of glue to get the eyes on quicker and uh, to help hold them on. I know that these uh, eyes have adhesive on the back, but for the purpose of spreading around the liquid fusion all over the eyes, I'm pretty aggressive. And I found that without putting a little bit of super glue, those eyes will shift as I'm trying to spread out the liquid fusion. And so I just usually just put a little dab of super glue. The issue is the super glue mixed with the Copic markers will dye it um, red. So if you put the eye down and move it around a, bot, a lot, you're going to have a red spot. I don't understand the chemistry behind it. I just know that's what happens. And so maybe it's because I'm not letting this dry as quickly. But um, there's going to be probably a little bit of red around these eyes. And I don't think the fish care. It just maybe makes it look like this is a little bit more tired and therefore more desirable to the to the bass. But I got my little hanger. I'm just going to make sure it fits in. You know, I never know if I got a little bit of glue in the hook eye. Uh, but this is a good time to test it before I get it all coated in glue. You can see, yep, I got a little bit of red there. So that's the glue reacting with the... Uh, the Copic marker, I believe. Maybe if somebody knows why that happens, they could uh, send me a message. So I'd be appreciative to know why that happens. But we're just going to do the same process we did before. I'm basically just going to cover a thin layer uh, with some beads down the uh, the high points of the uh, the foam, and then we're going to uh, spread it evenly all the way around, making sure to get a layer on each side of the tail. And then we're going to spread it around with our finger. Now, um, another trick is you don't want to, uh, and I'd assume this would be with any um, clear coat system uh, that you're applying with like a brush rather than spraying it. Uh, you don't want to sit there and work the same area over and over and over and over and over again. Just make a pass, work your way through it. Because even if, you know, this stuff doesn't react, um, like I haven't seen the paint blend or cause it to ruin your paint job, but I imagine if you sat there and rubbed it and rubbed it and rubbed it over and over again, eventually it may cause the, uh, uh, like the spots to blend into the green. I don't know. Um, but I like this liquid fusion because it just rubs off your fingers. And so I quickly spread that around. I'm going to go ahead and set my uh, nice little paper clip uh, hanger system in and uh, use the bodkin first. I forgot to get all those little tight areas that I couldn't reach. I wish I could have this camera at a better angle so you could actually see what I'm doing a little bit better but um, I also have to see for this and uh, I'm going to fish these so uh, you can just uh, play around with it yourself but um, Use the bodkin to get all those pressure points, the uh, tight spots, and uh, work it around real nice. And then uh, when you're uh, all finished, let's put the uh, paper clip back in uh, so we can hang it. And then I will give the tail, uh, always do this last, a uh, couple strokes, and then we'll put it up to hang. Now the color schemes are endless. Uh, as long as you can get some markers, you can paint them up however you want. And uh, it's super fun. Can't wait to fish them. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, just drop me a message. And uh, have a great day. Thank you.